right, so to change out the seals on this GMT case, this is the tool inventory that I use. So I use these uh, two drill bits right here. Uh, one's, uh, get the focus, five thirty seconds it looks like, and then an eighth inch. That's what I used right here. And that's the cordless drill that I used. Uh, I use a slide hammer here to, after I drill the hole, I'll insert that and then drive out or pull out the uh, front seal. Then I'll use a screwdriver to collapse the rear seal and, uh, and it just comes out. And sometimes you might have to use a seal puller. And of course, obviously you're gonna need a hammer and then I use a three inch sewer pipe. Uh, this one, to, this surface to drive in the front. Then I'll take the cap off and I'll actually sit the rear seal inside of that. You'll see as I install the seals. But that's my tool inventory to change out the in front input or input seal and the rear output seal for a GM late model T case. And that's it. All right, so I'm about to replace the seals on this transfer case. It's uh, it's high mileage on this vehicle. We're actually putting a transmission in it. It's in a, I think it's a 2016, 2017 Suburban, something like that. Uh, they're all but, but basically the same, but the transmission went out, had a 6L80 and so Obviously, we got to pull the transfer case to do the job, and because it had a hundred and over a hundred thousand miles, it's typically our policy will offer the customer to replace the seals in the T case even if they're not leaking because you've already got it out. It's at a reduced price, labor-wise, and it's just the, the time to do it. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm going to replace this seal, and I have a, a special process for getting this out, and I'm going to replace the rear seal. So. So the first thing I like to do is take my center punch and, uh, and I'll get me a spot to uh, center my drill bit because I'll actually drill through this seal. So I'm going to go ahead and strike it. And I've got me a little spot right in there, approximately centered on, this, on the width of this seal right here. And I'm going to drill into it. I'm going to drill twice, a smaller hole and then a, a bigger hole to accommodate this slide hammer right here. I use a slide hammer to get it out. Not, you'll see. I'll give you an inventory of the tools I use here in just a second. Right, so I'm using this Mac drill. It's the Mac drill bits here. And sometimes I'll have to sharpen these. And if I have to sharpen it, I'll show you how I do that. It's not, it's not super cr critical as to what size this is. It's just whatever you can get in there. I'll go ahead and load it up in my drill. Right in that spot that I... Center, use a center punch on and drill into it. I'll go up to another size, the actual size for my slide hammer. It's uh, 5 30 seconds, is what that slide hammer seems to, seems to accommodate that slide hammer best. hammer in there and it'll pull out and so I just with every slide of it I'll just screw it in a little bit more and there it is so and one thing I like to do I'll, I'll get me a clean rag and I'll wipe whatever shavings that might have got in there before I drive the new seal in just take me a clean rag here. Just kind of go up in there. Get those shavings out. Kind of make sure I don't got no shavings on this hub. Because I got to slide the new seal over the top of it. This is just a very effective way. I mean, some people might try to come in with a screwdriver and collapse the seal. And maybe some kind of a hook or something to pull it out. And sometimes I have to use a, a hook puller. But this is uh, really the best way for this. It makes It's just more efficient. And uh, I mean, I think the job pays a half hour to change out that seal and I can do it in about probably 10 minutes, if that. At our shop, we like to use genuine OEM parts. That's the factory seal. Slide it up on there, kind of start it. This is a, what, a three inch sewer pipe? This is an excellent seal driver. I, it's very rare that we encounter a seal that this won't fit on. 
to drive it in. I kind of like to stand back here when I do it, kind of kind of keep an eye on what's going on here. And I'll just gently tap around, trying to get it straight. Sometimes I'll put a block of wood on here if it's being centered is actually super critical and I'll just give it a solid strike and knock it in. But these typically aren't a problem. installed nothing to it now I'll change the rear seal on this one I like to use a screwdriver to uh, get right on the edge the seal and I kind of just collapse it You can collapse it and use a seal puller. Makes it easier to come out, or a lot of times this will just get it. We'll find out here in just a second. I don't have my reading glasses on, so I'm not sure about. <laughs> it's probably good to be sure about where you're getting. Come on out. Same thing, take the rag, wipe it out, make sure it's good and clean. If this was an aftermarket seal, like a Timken or something like that, those have paint on them, and generally the paint is actually creates a seal when it dri it's driven in, but we still put Loctite on it just in case there's some anomaly in the metal, and that'll keep it from leaking. But these GM seals, they have a silicone bead. Hopefully you can see that. And also there's a notch right here and that notch is the top and there's a weep hole on the bottom so that notch will line right up on this uh, portion right here excuse the compressor for this seal I'm going to use the sewer pipe again and I'll take this cap off and that seal fits perfectly in here and that notch I showed you what I'll do is I'll line it up like on a on the seam on this pipe so it kind of keeps me oriented and again, I'll kind of step behind it like this, line it up where I want it, right there. Just tap the thing in there. You can hear a change in the sound once it's fully seated. And that's it. Seals installed. That's a, I believe it's a half, so it's an hour job done in about 15, 20 minutes.